Hello and welcome to Glaswegian Geeks. Today we have taken a wee adventure down the coast of Scotland. A sort of, to yes. Scotland! Down at Gurruk. Scotland, we're in Gurruk, eh? Gurruk, eh? Aye. Gurruk. Get rid of the eh. We don't speak like that down here, right? You get battered for speaking like that down here. Uh, but you're, you're you, get, yeah, you get mentally abused for that, right? It's Don't no happen it. jet. It's no happen jet, right? Aye, they, they chuck up the A where the, all the sheep shaggers are, like, eh? Oh, dear. That's us. We've lost all the Welsh fans. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Anyway. After this that. Is, this is a bit of a, a follow-up to a previous film we've done. A yes. reboot. A remake. Yes, I... I, I don't I don't know how you can remake shit, but they done it. They they made it better, in my opinion. So we're going over. Well, not going over. We're reviewing the. Oh, wait, no, no sequel reboot to um, the one that me and James did for my first podcast, which was a good month ago at least. Oh, it's a bit longer than that. I think I think it was. It's a wee while ago. Yeah, just just a few weeks ago, you know. We say that. that, we say that. No, no, no. Yes, we're we're following up uh, Judge Dredd with the yes. most recent outing that Mr. Dredd has. Yeah. Uh, m- what can we say about it? Story-wise, it's better. Hell of a lot better. Yeah, yeah. You come on, get worse. boys. Right, come on. Seriously, right. We know that the Stallone one isn't great, right? But they ventured into, like, you know, the wasteland and stuff like that, which this film doesn't do. Uh, yeah, Mega City 1's the main sort of place where it is, but it was nice to see the wasteland. I think it was pretty adventurous to, to do that sort of thing, because the wasteland's full of fucking nutcases, of course. Uh, bit like Mad James, Max. have you watched any of Dread? Because it's full of nutcases there. It's full of nutcases, yeah, but I kind of like the wasteland thing. I'm a big Mad Max fan, as you know, so... Seeing the the actual wasteland is quite interesting. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about Mega City 1. No, we're not talking about Mega City 1. That's the show, James. Mega City 1, as in the location of this film, Dread, released in 2011? 2011? 2012. 2012? 2012, fuck me. It was I think it was the same year Avengers came out, so 2012. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, okay. Okay. Wow. Schooled again. Okay. Please take it away. So, Matt, me and you will cover the story, yeah? This. So, the story, starting off, is basically the same overview as the original movie, I guess, because it is obviously the same sort of source material. Um, so, obviously, Radiated Wasteland, America. Which I need to correct because the last time on the podcast I said that Mega City One was oh is it is, it, is Mega, C- Mega City One aren't it? I because I don't probably just ripped my piss out of James there for no reason. <laughs> um, the main reason that I need to correct was I said it was in Glasgow where it was set when it's actually set in Greenock, which is like a stone's throw away from where I we are right it's now. Literally ten fifteen minutes away from where we're recording right now. Um, all so this, all, yes, the, all this helpful information. Want to know something? James could retract a ton of statements today and any other podcast, but he doesn't because he's a wee diva. True. Yes. And Your silence speaks volume. <laughs> <laughs> so. So, the story goes as, obviously, cities overrun by everybody, just overpopulation. So... The same sort of rules with the law, law, yeah, aye, with the law. <laughs> um, lots of crime going on, and like the justice department can only answer a very small percentage of it. Um, which is where obviously the judges kind of step in. Yeah. Who have, in this case, have been severely upgraded. I'd say. Oh yeah, definitely. Well, they don't well, have like upgraded. hovering cars yeah. and stuff, but it's a more kind of practical future like that yeah. could maybe be set in like They're five ten looking. years aye. Um, which is kind of scary aye which is aye, the, if the way uh, the world's going right now then that's a possibility but yeah yeah like no name dropping me but um <laughs> aye uh, so <laughs> moving on um 
aesthetic of the whole sort of feel of the movie, it does feel a lot more realistic. It's sort of like when Christian Bale's Batman came out. Yeah, yeah a real yeah, world. A lot more believable sort of thing. Um, costumes as well look a lot better. Like not not that the old ones didn't look. The, the, they, they, looked, they looked comic book accurate. They, they looked but they more true to the source material. But it wasn't really like what this, you wanted. This, this is sort of thing. This like, I would class the costumes being as a almost an X Men style like reboot. Yeah. Like um, I I oh let's black leather. What's wrong with black leather? Fuck all. It looks fucking amazing. That's, okay. that's my take on it. Okay, right. Um, you, you've been hanging around with James far too much. Well, black <laughs> leather? I know. Tell me about it. A film going gear by the second. He has that effect on people, allegedly. Allegedly, <laughs> yes, of course. Um, but yeah, uh, as I said, the costumes, As I s- that's my main interest in most movies, is how the hell could I make that out of stuff around the house. Um, that's, like, the, the dread armour, like, it definitely looks a lot more realistic than it did when Stallone wore it. it but this this actually looks as if, if it could stop uh, yeah. a hell of a lot of bullets it, aimed at them. It looks like sort of, see, like airsoft armor, but with a crap load of extra Kevlar armor arms. on it as well. Aye. Um, the helmets look, look fucking fantastic. Oh, aye. You, you can't fault it. Like, the, the a movie can succeed or fail on just the look of it in. This movie is a very, a real world kind of dirty, very dirty look, which, hell, you look at some places in the world and it's actually not that far off it. And that this is a feel of the entire movie. It's just dark and dirty. And it's, got a sort of, it's got a sort of like Mad Max Blade Runner feel to it, I feel. Yeah. Like the sort yeah. of look and aesthetic of it. But it also kind of reminds me of, see, like the slums of the... Uh, what, South Africa and that? Yeah, yeah. You see, like, uh, District 9, is it District yeah. 9? The one with the aliens on it. Aye. It's, it's, that's the kind of the thing that you, you get from this. Um, but aye. Uh, and, like, the main thing that I kind of like that's the kind of improvement with costumes is, like, the costumes will look like they've been through the war sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Rather than, like, in the Dread one, they look far too clean for Yeah, it's in, like, like, oh, we just like got this off a rail. Aye. It looked, like, like brand new, polished off the, off the, off the hanger, and you're like... If that was really an Amer- like the wasteland of America, you where would you find the time to actually polish your helmet? I'm, <laughs> I'm sure any one of us could make a, a a pit stop for a wee polishing of the helmet now and again. James, <laughs> I don't know what you want me to say to that comment, um, but yeah, I totally agree. I, I mean, a film can be made or broken on how it looks and genuinely how its story is. The thing about this film is that every character complements the location. Everybody has been damaged in some way by living in Mega City 1, living in this wasteland. I mean, Mega City 1 and the wasteland that surrounds Mega City 1 aren't too dissimilar. The only thing that differentiates them is the people that live in them and buildings. Effectively, the two of them kind of complement each other in that way. And Dread finds himself in this sort of... He's in a situation he doesn't want to be in through work and through <laughs> more work. One, he has to train the rookie, he has to take her through things, and he doesn't really want to do that because Dread works alone. That's that's Dread's sort of mantra. He doesn't want to work with anyone. He can do the job himself, but he has to train this rookie up, Anderson, who is a psychic. And where we kind of find them is in this apartment block, which is get which gets put on lockdown. They go to investigate a murder. Peach and that's Street. when multiple murders, multiple murders, and that's when shit, hits the shit kind of yeah starts to go down. The villain Mama, played by the wonderful Lena Headey, is a fantastic villain. I mean, it was mad that said that this was practically an audition tape for Cersei Lannister. To be quite honest, yeah, I'll I'll even agree that her acting as a villain here is off the chart. Like. Uh, previously, she was in Terminator Sarah Connor Chronicles, uh, two seasons of that as Sarah Connor, and she'd done a hell of a brilliant job with that, even though it wasn't as good as or memorable as other, uh, is it Linda Hamilton? Terminator? Yeah, uh, Lena Hadley? Hadley. 
Hedy. Lena Hedy's uh, portrayal as, as Sarah Connor is really good in the Sarah Connor Chronicles, but not as good as Linda Hamilton's for obvious reasons. Like she, she does give a a, a good style to it, but she's nowhere near iconic. But that's her playing a hero, and this she's a absolute fucking bitch. She she. She's an animal. That's what she is in this. She's 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 a woman scorned. Like she she had a shit life. She was a prostitute. She got cut up by one of her pimps. Killed the pimp. Became a crime lord. If you ask me, you, you, oh, you you missed out the most uh, important part there. She feminized him with her teeth. To be honest, I think Matt's in uh, line for that at some point tonight. Anyway, yeah, um, not uncommon. As you might think, but yeah, I mean, it fits. It fits her character. She's a woman who kind of was pushed over the edge at one point and decided not enough's enough, and kind of implies not single-handedly, but pretty much single-handedly, she takes over this apartment block. It's the literal starting from the bottom. Now we're here. Yeah, you know? literally, like y- you know, and I like that story. I mean, yeah, she might be a bitch, but <laughs> she's not without reason to be a bitch. Like, I totally get where she's coming from. I mean, I think this was filmed kind of around about the time Game of Thrones was starting to get filmed, or maybe just, just after. Just after, I because think. Because she was, she was in Game of Thrones she in 2011, is. and still is, obviously. But, yeah, she she effectively plays a very, very, very sinister Cersei Lannister, like, in this. She's evil. Like, she is pure evil. And like she does C- not Cersei mind Lannister got a hold of a gun. She like. doesn't mind killing people who wrong her. She doesn't mind killing civilians. She's... I, I always say any kind of vil- film, superhero film or otherwise, is only as good as its antagonist. And she is a very, very good... Kind, like, believable antagonist. Like, you can see where she's coming from. And she doesn't want to have the life she has taken away from her, which I can understand. And I, and I, and yeah, I think the film wouldn't be anywhere near as good. I don't think if you didn't have Mama, the character, because she presents a character who is sheer evil, but deeply human in nature as to how she became that way. But yeah, so the film's basically Mama trying to kill the judges. That's that's basically it. Yeah, so the judges are trying to stop the production of this drug. The the ju- dreads aware of it, so they they get one of the guys and they're going to take him in and question him. But before they even do, they are trapped inside this this mega block, which has how many thousands of people in it? Shitloads. Yeah. Yeah, better not put a number on it. Yeah, Mama's trying to distribute slow mo, a highly addictive new drug. In fact, so much so that when she's going to kill people by throwing them off the building, she gees them a bit <laughs> yeah. and and skins them, of course, because that you know, if you're going to be a sick fuck, go all the way. Well, you got to send a message, and you know, like just throwing someone off is just like, aye, uh, fair enough. But throwing them off, skinning them, and drugging them to make it seem that they're falling forever. You know, you need to make sure people know who you are, you know? So, that's the best way of doing it in her case. Yeah, fuck them up right from the get-go. Just go, well, you know, I would let you off for doing this, but no, I'm going to triply fuck you over so that when you do go to hell, there's not going to be much left of you. But yeah, um, there's literally, you can say a lot about how good the film looks and how the story is and how the characters are because they're all phenomenal when it comes to actually talking about the actual plot start to finish it is literally just they go to one room da 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 kill a few people yada 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 they get into a bit of a bad situation and then of course it wouldn't be a Judge Dredd film with it if there wasn't some judges that were out to get Dredd themselves the naughty judges uh, well it's not as bad as obviously the old the old movie but like there's four, is it about four into it? Yeah, it's four, four. Four corrupt judges um, who tell Mama like we know who we are dealing with here. Like we want a million credits for this because it's going to cost us a I, lot to cover this up. This, this, th- not just that. That like 
we're going against dread. Like we ain't fucking about here. Like we need to make sure we recover for this shit. Um, so obviously, the four judges arrive, get into the get into the high rise, and obviously, dread picks them off one by one, pretty damn easily. Well, the first one he gets because he knows the like the whole kind of thing about it. He, he, I feel if they were to do a sequel to this, that it should be a small, a, a smaller story. Like this story happens all over a city block. Maybe have dread working with, say, a kind of internal affairs to stamp out corruption in the judges. And obviously, you'll have your hardline like pro judges that will work with them. And then you've got the ones that are kind of like, well, you kind of need to make these little deals with gangs and whatever to control the the area and control the crime in their area a little bit you know something there also be there will also obviously be judges are like do you know what like i go through so much shit and i get shit pay for it like i need to make money somehow yeah like, there's always there's always going to be someone like that sort of thing so that could be an, another thing that's going on if that if there ever was a sequel that should definitely be made it's it's like it's like the real world that it you're going to get people who do bad things because it's in their best interest. And, again, that's what makes Judge Dredd, both films across the board, kind of underrated on the basis of they take these real-life issues, put them into a, like a, a real fictional atmosphere, a real fictional... Whoops. That's that monologue, God. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Please silence your mobile. <laughs> um, <laughs> James, do you want to repeat yourself? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's been kept in, you know that. <laughs> we'll cut that bit out. We'll what, what, what was it you said? I can't remember. Fuck me. Oh, no, I, um, about, like, cops wanting their money in this movie, not in real life, because I'm not going to go down that road. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I suppose what I was trying to say was that Dread... Bubba lubba dub dub. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Where are we in the plot? Uh... Polis attacking Dread. Yes, the police attack Dread because that was a totally good idea. Out. You know, everybody knows and is scared of Dread. Even the people that work with him are terrified of him. Yeah, he's got that kind of reputation where he's not to be fucked with, which kind of makes a point of he is. He would be the kind of one that would lead any like internal affairs against corrupt police, uh, corrupt judges. And I would actually kind of like to see that. But even though this movie's quite got a hell of a lot of action, this if they were to do a follow-up with that story, it would be absolutely full start-to-finish action. I get the feeling this is why this movie didn't really get a sequel. Like, because it does look it up looks absolutely amazing, and the story is brilliant. But it's like at the end of it, you're thinking it's, the story's kind of closed. Like, you kind of want a wee bit more, but even though there is options, there's avenues to go down. I don't know why anybody didn't take the opportunity to do it, you know? Um, but to at the same time, like... To be honest, I think the reason why it didn't do so well... W- it didn't. It done really well in Britain. It didn't do well in America. I think it didn't do well in the cinemas. It did really well after it was like released to DVD and Blu-ray well, and whatnot. I, I, I recall reading an article basically asking why people didn't take it in America, and it was because America didn't like this idea of a dystopian America where all Americans are absolute bastards, and they didn't... They, 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 it, it w- like I remember reading this article. It was genuinely an article. I can't remember who wrote it or what website it was on, but they were saying that like a lot of American people felt personally attacked by this display of how Americans would act in this scenario. As Americans do, don't sometimes. take it as an offence. I'm pretty sure it's how we would all act in that scenario. It's a, it's a, it's a situation we're all definitely uncomfortable with. Unless you're doing here. And you find out the things p- ba- like set around Greenock. You're, you're it's a way like, of yes, life. It's, a, like, it's a way of life here. Yeah. <laughs> like, but that's that. That I, th- I think that was always like it done. It done fairly well in Britain, but obviously America's America. a lot bigger. <laughs> like you know, and they will shit on anything that's not their kind of target audience. 
But then again, how can you not have this movie in your uh, in your catalogue of like DVDs or something? It's uh, it's got a nice, simple story, kind of like what we discussed previously on another show with Predator. It's a nice, self-contained story. Happens in the one kind of location. It's action. It's got good characters. It's got a good kind of backstory to the characters, you know? Uh, your, your antagonist is... You, you, you kind of feel for her. You can ships and stuff, so... What what's what wouldn't be to like about this? The fact is, is every character in this film has a reason to do what they're doing. You know, yeah. whether you agree with them or not, there's a reason for it. Mama had had enough of being just thrown about and being treated like she was nothing. She made something of herself. She's now selling this drug that is making her tons of money. And there is a bit in the film where she chastises the guy who skinned the three men at the start and threw them off the balcony. She openly chastises him in front of everybody and says, this is your fucking fault. I told you to deal with them. I never told you to make a big fucking song and dance about it. Which is what a good villain does. A good villain knows what's right and what's wrong and what's going to get people chasing after them and that's why i like her she i think mama at her core while she is an evil evil woman is a woman who genuinely just wants to have somewhat of a good life no matter who she has to stand on to get it she is a victim in this film she completely is there's no denying it she's evil but you have to think about where she came from and that's why i like her as a villain it's why she's such a good contrast to dread who's focused on evil She's a survivor. Okay, this is why you should be in it. You're a woman. What, she's tits crazy or she's got tits? Very true. That is a fucking life yeah. motto there. Tits are bigger than balls, people. Maybe that should be the name of this one. <laughs> That's not a quote of the movie, though. Fucking should be. Should be. <laughs> See if Mama came out and said that, I'd be like, well done, hen. Well fucking done. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. Moving on. Moving on. Uh, we never actually wrapped up the story, did we? No. So, Dread wipes out the four judges that have came here, the corrupt ones, and then goes head to head with Mama. Aye. She's rigged up the entire uh, mega block with explosives, and it's tied to a kind of heart monitor sort of thing. Yeah, like on aye. with her body. So if yeah, she Still dies. Dead man's pit. The Switch. thing's gonna blow aye. up. So. Dread presented with a bit of a, well, a hard situation, decides to shoot her and then push her out of Mindy because, you know. Cause that, well, that is the only logical thing. Yeah, what was it? Two, 200, 200 floors up, so yeah. that's probably about a few thousand meters. At least. Um, so, if I can't get a, like, a phone signal in the amenities of my work, which is a fairly new build... There's no way that that fucking signal's reaching right to the Aye. fucking top for the bottom. And but uh, it's, it's a bit of a cruel... Well... Kicking the balls. Ah, ah kicking nice. Tits, a, a kicking <laughs> the tits, yes. <laughs> Remember, she does not have balls. She's yeah. got tits. Yes. So as a part of a, like, a nipple twist kind of fuck you, it gives her a, a bit of slow-mo before she goes. Just like she did to the guys at yes. the very start of the movie. Justice. Her own Served. Not, not as, you know, brutal. Ah, he, he didn't skin her because yeah. Dred's got morals. Yeah. He's above that. Yeah, he's above that shit. And that leads us to the end of Anderson's, well, Matt. It's, how can I put this? The most extreme job interview of all time, by the sounds of it. Um, because obviously Anderson's trying to be a police and she never fully qualified when leaving the academy so this is her last chance to kind of do it so she she hasn't made any uh, fuck ups the whole thing until she kind of gets taken as a hostage and loses her lawgiver which as we all know from our last review 
is something you don't fuck about with. <laughs> um, yes. Because whoever, it, the, guy, the guy that they've been wanting to interrogate and they've been marching through the whole tower block the whole time, turns on them and then loses a hand, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Which is kind of nice that they actually keep that in, like, it's only judges that can use them. It's ID'd to their DNA. Which um, I had a lot of comments about in the last one, but we're not going to go over that again, because yeah. fuck me. Well, if you want, you no, can... No, let's can, not. Can, let's not dive into that again. Like Can of worms, I? Ah, uh, it's... Bucket of worms. <laughs> 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 yeah, it wasn't. <laughs> um, so where were we? Uh, the gun. Oh, uh, the gun. Aye. You know, lawgivers are c- coded to the judge's ID. You see this at the very start of the movie when you see Dredd suiting up. Um, like he picks up the lawgiver and then it checks the ID of the g- to make sure that whoever it is that's holding it can actually operate it and not fire off any of the baby traps or anything like that on it. Um, well, baby traps, security or is male, you know. Mm. Baby traps. Anti-, anti tamper. That one. Use that. There we go. <laughs> um, Logiver in this one looks. I would I would I don't want to say an improvement on the old one because it essentially is the same thing. But it, it looks the it same. It looks pretty not bad. Like it looks more realistic. Because like on this like special features on the DVD, I think it is based around like an actual proper gun and all that. Like yeah. The way they've done it. Um. So. You know, live ammo and shit. <laughs> um. But I. So. After she loses the lawgiver, she basically just assumes, right, I've already failed this, because this is, a, this is a, it's kind of like mucking up a, a three-point turn on your on your driving test, isn't it? As soon as you've done that, you just kind of give up on life. <laughs> um, so she's she's like, do you know what, I'm not getting a job anymore, I'm just going to go do whatever the hell I want, I'm going to go ape shit. So she ends up picking up like civilian weapons and stuff like that, which is the only time in the movie they ever do that, which we kind of yeah, are not really uh, sure about. Kind of like... They don't. They don't really explain why. Like they know that they're trapped in. They know that they've only got so much ammunition, and it's kind of one of those situations of like, well, their their backs are up against a wall. I'm sure they would use anything, like, yeah. that they can get their hands on to survive. Because I know at first we were kind. Well, some of us were kind of thinking maybe the, the civilian weapons have got the same sort of booby traps on them or something like that. But then you see Anderson pick them up towards the end of the movie, and you're like. Yeah, she's killed Why like two of them at the end and when got their guns off. running low on ammo and stuff because you were both running low on ammo to run about the same time. Like you've killed like what fifty guys who are all carrying yeah. pretty heavy machinery. Ah, even a even a little pistol would be better than nothing. Aye. What? Uh, what is it? Another movie it says harsh language. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's uh, that my my only two gripes with this movie is that and the fact that Anna Anderson doesn't have her helmet. Yeah, that's but annoying as fuck. It's it's nothing major because, because she needs to use her magic mutant powers. Yeah, but here's the thing: she could take her helmet off and back on with great ease. Like we we saw Dread put his helmet on at the start, and it's he he could take it off, but you know he's he knows the situation that he's going into. He's probably faced situations like this before that are maybe just as bad, and he needs all the body armor that he. Can. Probably read the reviews of the last movie as well. Yeah, probably that as well. Probably went, hmm, well, I'm not going to do what Stallone done, because he's a dick. This is Dredd we're talking about, not Carl Urban. Oh, no, like oh Dredd, aye. Dredd's oh obviously aye. Wikipedia this before he... Oh, aye, he it. saw this movie, and he went, who, who takes a fucking helmet on? No, fuck's sake. I know. It. There's another thing that comes up in the movie that I didn't notice until I watched it the other day, that, remember in the old movie, like... He was constantly saying, I am the law. Yeah. He says it once in this movie, and it's pretty fucking badass when he says it. He also, in the old movie, remember he used to say, uh, I knew you'd say that. The bit when he pushes, well, when he kills Mama at the end, he says something, but it's not, like, I knew you'd say that. It's, um, what was it? Oh, it's like plea notified or something like that. Or guilty plea notified. And it's basically the same thing when you think about it and you're watching it and it's like, Kinda like I, I like how you did it, and I'm glad you didn't go down the way that you know Stallone did it, where he was saying it every five bloody minutes, using it as a bloody comma. I think if you take a look at the two films side by side, 
Like we might as well do a comparison of the two movies right now. Oh yeah. Uh, the the look of Judge Dredd, Stallone's movie. Too clean. Too looks clean. Amazing. It oh. looks straight out the 2000 AD progs, which you know is what we would kind of want now. Like, Aye. how many times have we wanted to see Hugh Jackman in the yellow suit. yellow yellow suit or the like kind of dirty kind of brown, brown yeah. Aye. So, like, how many times have we wanted that and we've been teased it at uh, the Wolverine mm. at the end he opens a suitcase? We've been teased so much with the iconic costume. Never got it. So, first chance to get, they go for the downright same look, basically the same look, the same uh, Lawbringer as the motorbike. Yeah. The one in the... Uh, uh, Judge Dredd looked more out the progs as well. Lawmaster. Lawmaster, sorry. Lawmaster uh, is more f- basically plucked from 2000 AD progs. Where this, it's a more practical, it's a grittier version of it, you know. It was one, like, I've, re- I've watched the special effects on this too much. Um, like the special features and the bike was, like, specifically designed for the movie. So it's not, like, one you can buy off the peg or... Yeah. One you can even buy and upgrade it and put the armor on it. It was like one that was designed from scratch, kind of like the the Nolan Batmobile sort of thing. So yeah, yeah. It was designed only for this movie. So there's ov- obviously, obviously there will be prop makers out there that are either working on it or have actually been able to recreate it. But up until that movie came out, that w- that idea was, well, that specific idea was never actually done which is kind of impressive it, it looks a more practical and st- like if you if you look at the 2080 uh lawmaster it's it looks like a kind of like a harley like, like a harley. A, it's, it, a it looks a harley. badass harley the lawmaster in dread is a more kind of practical motorbike it's it looks at, it looks apart and it looks a kind of more dirty kind of real life like kind of vehicle right. that the judges would use Look, it clearly looks more built for like speed, agility, man. Then, because the old one, I because in the old dread, it did look, it looked fantastic. It looked oh, like you're right looked in the apart. comics, but at the same time, you're thinking that if that was in like a road chase, that looked really heavy, and I don't know how much you'd be able to actually keep up with someone on that thing. Whereas this one looks more like a super bike sort of style. Yeah. I don't know my bikes, but you know that's as much information as you get. You know what I mean? But I, um, the newer one looks. I say newer. It looks rugged as anything, but it looks a lot better. I feel. Um, obviously goes a lot better with the the idea of this the movie, um, looking a wee bit worn out, but not com- completely useless. Um, doesn't have as much tech as the old one. I don't think. Like it has like, a couple. Of extra. Yeah. It's got machine guns, obviously, because you know you need them when you're in the force. Um, and also you need thing like crowd control. It has that, which I, I'm assuming is just a speaker. You don't really see much. Yeah, of that. yeah. The lawmaster. Yeah. It, uh, in the first scene, it says uh, crowd, control, crowd control, and it's just basically a like issuing a a recording. Yeah. Stay calm. Like uh, don't interfere. Uh, judges on scene, kind of thing. Like just like basically. If you don't want to go in an ISO cube, get fucked. So I'm, I'm, I'm assuming by the looks of it, it's, it's armor plated and stuff like that. So yeah. obviously, and that is about all the tech you really see. You and know, a couple, not, couple that, of small guns on it as well. Aye, a, cu- a couple of few things. There's a few gadgets on it as well, but you don't really see much more than that. Like they, they show you what you need to see. Is what I'm meaning. Like whereas in the Stallone one, that had like it was pretty much like something out of James Bond. Like yeah. Something, something Q they made. Like it had like the flat head f- it was able to fly it did not have like pure stupid stuff as well on it like as stuff for anti chases and stuff as well which I and they had to kind of make up the routine of or not the routine the idea of him being chased just to show off some of the stuff on that bike which I kind of felt was melt an advert sometimes but this one they show you what you need to see and then like let you see that there is other options on this but you don't actually see them in use which is kind of cool yeah uh, as as far as like weapons and stuff goes, it is pretty basic, you know. The right. it's it's weapons that you'd still see around about nowadays. Like everybody else, apart from obviously the lawmaster, that the, law, the lawgiver. Mm. That's the only sort of one that looks proper futuristic because obviously it's voice commanded and stuff. Yeah, voice. It's, but it still it's is a, something it's really high tech. It's like 
it's essentially like if you've like a, your cod loadout in one gun <laughs> in it, like grenade launcher, hi, uh, like incendiary, high X, everything. Armor which, Peterson, which is uh, really good. Uh, like plain Swiss Army gun. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Uh, it's like playing the Judge Dread vs. Death game. Like it's basically Aye. everything Aye. that's in it, and oh, that's what you want. You want something that's like. Aye. Like that that's all you need. Like you don't need like where you see all these movies like uh commando and stuff, like Arnie going through like like a minigun and then like a shotgun and Carrying a couple of Uzi's. I know. Back. Like this is like everything you need in the one thing. Obviously it's heavy reliant on ammunition, which is a major plot point of the movie. They run out of ammunition because they go through so many people. Aye. Um what else? Other thing we need to talk about, uh, soundtrack to the movie. Soundtrack is dynamite. Well, I'm well, me personally, I'm not a big fan of like CL yeah, electronic dubstep movie and dubstep and all that. But this movie, like, it has all the music in it, but it fits so well with the sort of like aesthetic of the rest of the movie. It's brilliant, and it actually like it's one of the one sort of movie soundtracks. It's like one of the first ones I downloaded. Um, but as I said, like. Not a big fan of dubstep, but this yeah, movie was, it, it fits in pretty well, and it you can, it is kind of catchy. Some of the like, even though it's not really, I wouldn't say tunes, but you know, like the sound is actually, it's, it's not bad. Yeah, <laughs> um, it's. I wouldn't actually go out my way to listen to dubstep, but it's, uh, <laughs> it it is, perfectly suited for this movie, and especially when it came out, two thousand twelve, was kind of like the major, like, kind of dubstep was brought to the forefront of the music industry. Obviously, it's not really survived that well, because it was more of a a phase. But watching this, it's only, what, five years after? It still fits. It still fits, and it doesn't look out of place. Like, you could obviously replace any of the music with some, like, a heavy riff guitar, and it it would still go. But it's... As far as I'm concerned, it's pretty much perfect. First thing I also want to mention is this movie, obviously, if you're watching this, like just a warning, it is gory as in. Yeah. In, some, in places, like... I'm I'm, I'm kind of glad that you got into that because comparing this to Judge Dredd, it's night and day. Like, there's... Yeah. N- there are Okay, there are some deaths and stuff, but I'm glad they went the direction they did with this movie because... If they didn't, like, they'd be doing so much wrong. Yeah, like, 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 look, look, look at this, and look at Deadpool, for example, and Logan. Yeah. Those, if they didn't look the way they were, they didn't have these parts of the story, like, a dirty kind of look, and kind of a hard push, like, gore, they probably wouldn't be as liked. Like, because it's... Trying to think, what else could I compare it to? Um, but like, obviously, you want to kind of live up to what your expectations are, and also in most cases, you want to surpass that. This definitely does that in this case, I think, because like, obviously, reading the Judge Dread comics, you you kind of get the the story of what what's happening in that, but you don't really feel it until you've seen it. You know what I mean? Um, and this is a pretty good visualization of. How brutal, like the world could end up, if you know what. Oh yeah. And we've got this on in the background, and we've just got to the scene where Mama has been pushed out the window, and it is an absolutely incredible scene. Just the the music in the background, just a, the kind of. Oh, you could say it's like Mama's song, like the kind of like. Is that not the name of it? Probably. There's one. There's definitely one that's named after Mama. On yeah, on the it's, it's probably like it, it's probably named that, that one. And that one and the, like the the main sort of general theme over it is called Cheese a Pass. So they're the two tunes like that I really got into when I was out <laughs> running and stuff like that. It was, it's good. It's good music for running anyway. But like as Mario says, like when she's falling, she, you see her go through all the floors, like or through the middle of all the floors of where you've seen through the movie. So you can see how many levels they've actually fought up and stuff like that to get to her. Because they start from the from the very bottom. Um, oh, she stopped. 
<laughs> but there's also a bit, there's also a bit like that Susie pointed out the other night about after he's pushed her out and Dredd just looks like he's waving at her. He's <laughs> like, just like, bye, bitch. <laughs> see you next fall. And as soon as you see it, you can't unsee it now. It's just like, lol. Um, and then after this bit, it's like, yeah, she she hits the, the ground. Just, but the way that she, that's filmed as well, that's very like the the the, the director of the, of it just must have been on something trippy because it is very beautiful it's like like she's landing on obviously glass t- so they can get this shot and her just her face landing then blood just slowly coming out it she turns into soup don't she? yeah pretty much <laughs> <laughs> human soup mm, yum yum stardom now <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah it's this movie I, I don't know what it is there's I don't know if it's maybe Carl Urban's performance in it. I think it's is a multiple thing. It's not just uh, oh, Carl oh, Urban is perfect as Dread. Like okay, who, who who would you say is better, him or Stallone? Oh, that, is that even a question? Well, don't look at me. Well, like you know, and on a, on, a, on a previous podcast, no, you have didn't been. I? I've no. I've still got the recording somewhere. Lies. Don't don't you fucking worry. I never say this. Right? <laughs> that uh, Judge Dread was your favorite movie of all time. I never said that. What was it you said? What I said was that the original Judge Dredd movie, because I was wee when I seen that, right? I said you were a wee was, boy. I was a wee, right? I so that's the mo- that's the movie that got me into reading Judge Dredd comics and comics in general, and then you all blew it out of proportion, assuming oh, Matt just said Judge Dredd's the best comic book movie and all this, and this has been going on what nearly five years now, four years at about least. Uh, at and least four years. I've year. not heard the end of it, and it's pish, and no. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> Aye. But I, I, I honestly, like, I, if something go, gets you into movies, like, yeah, then yeah, I, it works. Yeah, we're all, we're all for it. I'm not a fan of it now. because we'll, we'll I, slag I, you for I, it. Aye, I, I, I watch it now and again now, and you're like, oh, how the hell did I, like, how the hell did I get this far watching from starting there, like, sort of thing, but, like, fair enough, I'm here It's now. a journey travelled. Yes. Don't look back, look forward. Yes, yes, yes. And on that... We're coming to my favourite segment of the podcast. This is where James puts down his phone so that he can't Google the fucking thing. Because I tried it one time and I fucking copped him out. Oh, no, no, no. This... Oh, I'm introducing this part, but Matt can take over. <laughs> this is this is a part where, James, we tell you the production budget of this movie. Then we have you guess. Three chances, and all you get is a higher or lower of what the movie took. So, Matthew, take it away. Right, so it cost, was it, $50 million? How much did it take? Worldwide. Dun dun dun. Well, I know it didn't make that back. Correct. It didn't make that back. Um, I think it made it back pretty quick once it came on DVD. No, but we're talking box office. I'm going to say 41 mil. Lower? Lower. Um, he's not going to guess the actual number because no. you know, fuck that. <laughs> right, okay. Cause see if he fucking got this right, I would actually strangle him because I knew that he'd fucking have googled it. No, don't cheat. <laughs> uh, thirty-five mil. You fucking googling bitch. <laughs> Didn't Google that. Wow, I get it right. Give your fucking phone. <laughs> I, w- I want to go through your fucking search history. No, in fact, no, I don't. I thought this relationship was built. Oh, yeah, anybody wants to go through his search history? Nope, it definitely does not. Uh, no, I only made th- run about 35 mil. Thir- which is yeah, a shame 35. because it deserved better. It really did. I think. Like the fact that most people remembered the old movie is the reason they didn't go see this one because they thought. I don't think so. I don't think. Oh, no, I'm not saying that for me. 
main reason I'm saying that I is think people who had some seen people the film would probably have had an introduction to Judge Dredd. I mean, I don't think ma- that many people, as much as it is a great series, and it's fantastic. I mean, the problem is really that I don't want to say Judge Dredd isn't popular, but it's not that popular. Like I, I would say it's pretty popular, but I know, but not but Avengers popular. On it's not exactly like Batman Superman. It has its Avengers. It, it has its it has its like cult following of fans who will read it religiously and stuff like that. But remember, when you're making a film based on something like that, you, you're relying on that cult following, kind of. I mean, and we, we think it's popular because like, we're constantly surrounded by this sort of stuff. But like, if you ask a commoner on the street, you know? A commoner. Well, a commoner! Oh, I'm sorry that us commoners have came to Goruk. For your information, Should Matt, be. I know many commoners who did go see Dread and did like it. It, like I say, it made most, it made most of its money from Britain. It was America that yeah. didn't take the film as well as you would expect, which is a shame because you know Americans love gun violence and drugs. Yeah, so yeah the, the the the, the domestic take on the movie, which is America, thirteen million foreign, which is everywhere but America, twenty two million. So that just goes to show you that, like you said, <laughs> for some reason it failed in America miserably, but. Everywhere else combined, it kind of it kind of done something. It's a British series. Oh, of course. It's uh, it's Judge Dredd is a British made series from two thousand AD. Quite a few American comic book fans may still not have heard of two thousand AD, or maybe they just don't like two thousand AD. Two thousand AD have a very particular style and a very particular way of doing things. And like I say, it's not your it's not your over advertised Marvel or DC run of the mill. This is what you get every month, sort of stuff. Judge Dredd's been running for a very very long time, and I don't even think it's ever properly been rebooted. I think it's just been consistent. It's kind of like the same so as what do you call it? the Constantine before he became like DC, like when he was, was at Vertigo or whatever. Yeah, he was with uh, Vertigo, so and then he went to sort of DC. Same, sort of and that's where he yeah. kind of built in popularity was DC. It's because 2008 are a very well-established comic book company. Oh, yeah. But uh, people who weren't quite in the know would probably still view them as indie. I, I, t- see, to be honest, anything other than Marvel or DC, I would view as indie. Image, uh, IDW, Boom Studios, Dynamite Entertainment. I would, uh, in 2008, I would all class as indie, which, you know... Th- the the, the kind of creative teams do have a little bit more flexibility. Obviously, with something like Dread, that's a continuation over, what, 30, 40 years-ish? Yeah, I mean, Dread stories never really, like, never really went away from what it was. It's no, no. It's been continuous. And like I say, like, in terms of, like, talking about characters like Anderson, Anderson didn't come into the comics until Dread versus Death. You know, she was part of the side division when Death was kicking about. So... In this film, she's technically prematurely introduced. Like she's actually not even in the book. She's actually part. She's one of the heads of the side division. Do you know what I mean? And I mean, like you say, when you talk about things like you know why she doesn't have a helmet at the end, you see her walk away with a helmet. She wasn't fully a judge, so that may explain why she didn't have a helmet. Possibly, you have to earn it. So we've watched this. And we all seem to enjoy it. I struggle to find. Like I always do like a pros and cons list on this before, so I could got some notes to refer to before we do our podcast. And I struggle to find bad things about it. Like obviously the the whole thing with Anderson the helmet was it was kind of a minor thing. It wasn't something that would ruin the movie for me or anything like that though. Like you know, there's nothing in it that could really ruin it because it's one of my favourites. Yeah, like I I wouldn't say it ruined the movie for me. It it. It was a sm- a small blip in the grand scheme of things, which this is one of, th- I'd say, one of the most kind of accurate comic kind of stories. So, I th- I've like, I've, I think I said earlier, the guns and the Anderson leaving her helmet at the bike, like, those are the two minor things. And realistically, it's really fuck all. And and against everything else, all the pros. So, and when this came out, this instantly went my top ten movies of all time. So, I can't really fault it. And previously, I had said 
when myself and James recorded our review of Punisher that if anything's going in my top 10 movies all time, that it's hands down a 10 out of 10. And that's what this is for me. 10 out of 10. Yeah. I'm I'm the same. Like, out of, like, I can't, obviously, I've not really, I don't know if I could do an all time movies one, but in the past 10 years, it's up there with, like, Kingsman for me, because Kingsman's, like, my fucking favourite movie ever right now. <laughs> um, but, it's it's brilliant. Like it's so good that there are there's been so many people that are making an an, an, uh, was it, uh, an appeal to try and get a sequel made to try and get money together for it and that. Which I don't know if it's still going on. I know there was a make a dread sequel going on, but I don't know if that's still happening. I don't know if it's still happening, but I'm sure uh, that there will be some kind of following to get that still going. But obviously they've announced that they're going to do Mega City One, which kind of like an anthology series or something. Uh, maybe Dread will do cameos. Maybe they'll get Carol Urban. Maybe there's a little cameo here and there, you know. There was also, like, I'm pretty sure there was a fan film not that long ago. That the Judgmenty one that was on YouTube. That one that one is pretty, it's set in the same sort of universe, I think, and it, it's him going out into the wasteland. So, and it's pretty much the best parts of, the, of Judge Dread and Dread thrown together. Um, and it's a good wee watch. Like, I definitely recommend checking it out if you haven't. Um, I think it's. I'm sure it's still on YouTube. Yeah, I'm sure it is. And if uh, once we stick this podcast up, we'll tag a link to it because it was really good. And it came out maybe like a year or so after, so it's still very fresh in your memory for this movie. And I wish, I really do wish that there was more to this movie. It was a nice, dark, gritty, real kind of style comic book film. And the actors in it are fantastic. I can't see any fault with their acting. There's not much overacting in the way of Stallone's Judge Dredd. And what, do you, do, you want, do you want to say something on that, Matt? Uh, no, because nobody could ever overact. I'm going to call it him. right now. <laughs> I get an eight. Because there's no real character oh. development. No character uh, development? There's no real character development, is what I'm saying. Dredge main character, and he very seldom budges in it. He, he budges at the end. He's like saying to Anderson at the start, like, oh, I fail's a fail. And then she's survived this fucking yeah, shitstorm. Yeah, because she saved and his he's life. Because she saved his life. That's, that's not character development. That's just a reaction to something that happened. Anderson does develop as a character. She or maybe she, she proves she himself in his eyes and he's like, oh, okay. Yeah. The biggest bit of character development is when she decides she doesn't want to be a judge. That's that's what that scene at the end is. It's like she feels she's failed and she hands the badge over. But to me, that's like not just an admission of failure. That to me is her saying, maybe this isn't the life for me. That's to me is quite important. No. I mean, it's. It, I mean, they say that it is her. She feels she's failed, so she hands the badge over. But to me, that's her. She's been through this really traumatic experience, and she's like, maybe this isn't for me. Maybe this isn't what I should be doing. And yeah, that's that's just what I take away from it. But as we know, at the end, she does become a judge. She continues doing what she's doing, and you know, say la vie from there. Realistically, most of your character development comes through the backstory of Mama. Most of the real deep yeah. stuff. So that's well, that's why I, I knock it down. I don't fault the film badly for how it looks or the story that it tells, but I do think that you know if you want to be invested in these characters, like when Dread, for example, when Dread gets shot, I feel bad because Dread got shot. I don't feel bad because I feel invested in Dread's character. I mean, it's the same in the books. We 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 don't really know everything about Dread, and it's like that for a reason. I would say that the the whole mystique of Judge Dread is kind of like the Joker syndrome of stuff where uh, you don't know a lot about him so any story that you, you, you kind of f- where they flesh out some of his backstory that it's more interesting and especially a character that's been at the forefront for how like however many years like 30 odd years then you, yeah maybe maybe they can introduce some more of his backstory, but you basically know it. He's a clone of another judge, one of the best judges. So, I'm, I'm, 
maybe if they got a second movie then that would be more character development you'd actually see and feel for them a little bit more all positive points like he makes some good points on it I'm not saying it's a perfect movie nobody's saying it's a perfect movie but it is definitely a movie to watch yeah I would say so and on that note this is us for the show, Matt. It was nice having you back on. Yes. And oh. I'm sure it won't be long until you're back on. But just to give you a heads up, I'll be getting a taxi to your place next time. I'm a fuck what walking up that motherfucking hill again. It, like, like I know I've worked on my legs lately, but Jesus Christ, mate. So I'm a tank. You are. You're a... <laughs> A fail tank. Still cold to get it. Uh, so you can find our stuff all over the internet. You can find us on SoundCloud Glas- at Glaswegian Geeks. You can find us on iTunes at Glaswegian Geeks. YouTube, have a wee search for us at Glaswegian Geeks. We've got some videos up there. We've got some. We've got our podcasts. Matt will be hoping to chuck some cosplay making videos up there shortly. Yeah, just stuff that... It's not going to be stuff that you need to invest a load of money into. Like, don't worry about it. It'll be... Yeah, stuff. on a... On a It'll be like 10-minute like builds. budget. Aye, like 10-minute builds that you can make out of stuff that you can find around the house It's and make it actually look presentable. Like, well, I say presentable, but... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> make your it stuff's look, always make presentable. Make it look pretty, pretty not bad. Um, I've done some stuff recently. I made uh, the laser gun for Rick and Morty, which is one I might actually put up, because it was a pretty easy build. And yeah, it was it. it was easy stuff to make, so i definitely recommend if you are ever thinking about getting into the costuming biz, always start from in the house before going and spending hundreds of money on stuff that you could easily save. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's out for a saving. All right. Uh, and you can find us on Facebook and Twitter at Glaswegian Geeks. You'll find uh, our ripped apparel uh, code and link there at Glaswegian Geeks. Ten percent off. Just saying. Yeah, ten. Save yourself a wee ten percent. Get a t-shirt and stuff, and you know, share a picture of what you get to us and give us a like. Thanks for watching or listening or whatever you do with your things. Yeah. 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 Watch, that. watch on YouTube. Listen anywhere else. Download whatever you want. Listen on the go. Listen in the, at the gym. Listen at work when everyone Listen else around you is pissing you off. On the yeah. toilet. Or or on the clodgy. That's what I watch it and listen to it. That's that's kind of strange. That's my quiet that's, room. That's kind of strange that you listen to me and James talk most mostly me and James. Oh, by myself. But just 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 a dread one by yourself. Just like oh, I love myself. I sound so good. <laughs> <laughs> And on that note, Matt, do you want to sign us off? This is Matt signing off for Glaswegian Geeks. We'll see you or hear you somewhere else. Bye. Say our word. Say our phrase. Geek out. Geek out.